On this week's edition of Art House, it's all about the Masters celebration from the Oshobo Art School at 50 Exhibition to the grand finale of the Colade at 70 Fiesta, which has been on for a while now. We'll have that and more on today's edition of the program. A warm welcome. I'm Melinda Akinlami. Let's quickly take our Arti quotes and I'll be right back with the details. An artist should think out of the box and use the materials around to create art. Anything an artist can do with oil, I can do with beads. It has become my trademark. Vision of the Last Quarter, celebrating 50 years of Oshobo art, is an exhibition by the pioneers of this art form. It didn't take place in Austrian State, but at the Thought Pyramid Art Center here in Lagos. The Oshobo Art at 50 traveling exhibition comes to the commercial city of Lagos after making several stops in different countries around the world. I feel so much happy that uh, we are able to celebrate the 50th years of our assistance in art. Though we started in 1964, we only picked 50 as kind of uh, dates to use, which is, I think, is synonymous. They have come from nowhere to now here. You know, when they started, they started with so many doubts. You know, uh, low self-esteem, people thought that they didn't go to school and they looked at themselves as some sort of people that should be promoted. But right now, they've been able to raise themselves to a point that there's no difference, there's really no difference between the, those who went to formal school and those who didn't go to formal schools. We started from nowhere. Uh, we are somewhere today. Like one of the artists said earlier, uh, and we thank God we are somewhere today. That's why the fact we have gone around so many places to teach in so many places, whether in Nigeria, in America, in Germany, and so on and so forth. But we feel at home we should come back to celebrate 50th uh, anniversary of Oshobo Art. One cannot forget how they made a name for themselves, springing from an experiment from 1962 to train youth who had potential. Yes, the, the, the major thing, it doesn't matter, you may be a painter, you may be a writer, you may be a sculptor, you have to be original in your approach. People may not like it. First of all, you are creating for yourself. You want to enjoy what you are doing, you want to like what you are doing. And after liking what you are doing, you can share the joy with your people or people come, who come around and look at your works. You should not be working for people to like. When you like your work, people like you will like your work. The best impression I had when was about 35 years ago, when I was still in school, then they used to teach us about the Oshobo art as the naive, uh, art done by naive people, you know, unschooled people, those who didn't go to school. That was the impression then, but now I know better. I know that these people are people who have their imagination, you know. Art has to do with creativity. Art has to do with productivity. Art has to do with your ability to, to produce products that render service and solve problems. And the Oshobo Art School have been able to solve problem of identity. They've been able to solve problem of history, record of history. They've been able to solve problem of people who have been able to put their tradition beyond the, the, the four corners of their town to the world. You know, I think I, I, I read them very high. Some of the pioneers like Jimo Buraimo and Marino Yelami are here to add color to the event and interact with the younger ones who have heard and admired them from a distance. When these people started in 1964 and thereafter, we would notice that um, their art started on the note of what the scholars would call you know, naivety of form or what they call primitivism, meaning that these are artists who did not go to school. 
football, they just call themselves artists. We look at them from that point and look at the development that has, that has happened thereafter, the fact that some of them have been able to go, go back to school, the fact that some of them, even though they didn't probably go back to school, but they went back to universities, particularly abroad in Nigeria, teaching art students their technique. We have to look at their work from the strength of that development. And also, we need to look at their resilience. The fact that they did, they did not yield to negative uh, criticism. The fact that when a lot of people try to persecute them, they stay focused. And that should be something meaningful to young artists who are aspiring to become masters in the future. That resilience and strong will are just some of the virtues the organizers and veteran artists intend to pass on to the next generation. Getting an education is important, but it's even more essential to aspire to be good against the odds. That's why the theme is symbolic, because it's time to look for a new breed that will step into their shoes. When we talk about black culture, how to elevate it, preserve it, and let people know, Oshobo art can never be overemphasized in this aspect. So that is why Thought Pyramid Art Center decided to host this show to help to let people know what Oshobo art is all about. And when you look at the title, Vision of the Last Quarter, because the pioneering students of Oshobo art are already old, and they have already trained some young ones. So for that, for the movement to continue, we want people to know about them so that they also can pass the banner to the next set of people. Now let's look at what these men who exude strength and energy have brought here. Most of the works were done recently and they've stayed true to their signature style. Morana Yelame is still hooked on his oil painting and cultural themes. The pigments I use are called oil color and uh, I have different themes for my works, paint from my experience and uh, I like a lot of folkloric things and because so these folkloric things do inspire me. So I am free and I, I think when I, de when I design a work or I, I try to create something it comes to me naturally. I don't have to look and copy. I want to remain original. And I've been doing this for over 54 years. And I'm known as a man of two words. If I'm not painting, I'll be working on the performing arts. While Jim Obraimo also talks about what makes bead a unique medium and why it's become his trademark. Bead is very important in Yoruba. It's very important even everywhere in the world, depending on what bees are used for. The bees in, in Nigeria is very sensitive because uh, when the bees came from Portuguese, it was given to, uh, used to be kind of exchange of slavery. But later on, the Obas were the people getting the bees. And that's why since that time, his bead has become an ornament that no other person can wear, be, can wear the crown without being a king. So that is why bead has become something very important. So I, when I started, I started using bead, and the bead becomes something very important to me because it gives me an, an energy. It gives me courage to work. Without bead, I don't think whether I can do any other thing besides that. The reason is because Bead has become part and parcel of me. The beads are very essential. In Yoruba land, we use bead for so many other things, either traditional ways, either for crown baking, either for ornament. But I decided not to go that way. I decided to use it as contemporary art. And that's why in the whole of Nigeria, the whole of Africa, I happen to be the first artist to have ever introduced bead into contemporary art. And that gladdened my heart, gladdened my, myself because it is very important to me that I've started this kind of crusade and throughout the whole world, that is what I'm teaching. 
The vision of the last quarter, Oshogbo Art at 50, is a testament that sometimes what makes us move to the next level is just the ability to seize the day when given the opportunity so one can move from nowhere to somewhere. <laughs>